This is a little under the sea party invitation made with Elmer's and Exacto products. Here's the front, some sand, fibers, and glitter, and the back made with decorator tape. Let's see how. I started by using 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, I like the thickness of it and it works well with this technique. I put it on top of some brown paper bag and this is the Elmer's new painter's markers. It's actually acrylic paint in liquid form. Now you can draw right with these markers but it would be a pretty intense color. I wanted to try to do a wash. So I actually dabbed some of the paint in a little cup and then used a sponge dipped in some water to then grab that paint and do a wash all over the paper. And I really like that light blue color that it gave me. I wanted a little bit darker at the top. I knew I was going to write with some white paint up there. So I went over it again. A little less water made it a little darker. And then added a little bit of green just to give some of that underwater feeling. But the sponge dabbed into water, into the paint, uh, worked really, really well for this. I needed it to dry quickly, so I used my heat gun. And of course you could let it just dry naturally. It may bend a little in the drying process, but you can just bend it back to flat. While that's drying too, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the actual invitation. I used my printer to just print the date and time on a little sand background. So I'll use my X-Acto scissors there to cut that out. We're going to glue that on the back of the tag in a little bit. Now we need a tag shape and they make these wonderful templates that work perfect with your X-Acto knife. So they have a couple different tag shapes. This one has a rounded corner. Just work your way around the shape using your craft knife. There are little tabs along the way there that hold the stencil or the template together. So after you get most of it done with your craft knife, you'll probably end up doing some trimming here with scissors. <clears throat> now I couldn't really press that hard and keep everything lined up with the camera so um, and the water 140 pound watercolor paper is a little bit thick so I ended up um, having to go do a little bit of touch up with the craft knife of course on your self healing craft mat. I think this watercolor approach using the painters would work great for cards or scrapbook pages and what I like then is when you use the markers later on to add accents or maybe right on top of this background you know the colors are going to go together perfect because it's the exact same markers you used to make the wash that you're using to add highlights or text. Now that the tag is done on the front I should have gone ahead and glued the back piece on at this point but I wasn't thinking I was excited to do the front so I went ahead and used the painters and you just push down on the tip to get that paint flowing and I used it here to draw some coral and some seaweed just to add some of that under the sea effect. Some green lines there to look like some seaweed. Now I've got their glue pen has a fine tip and a broad tip so I wanted to use the fine tip and do the same approach literally draw some coral with a very fine line of glue and then you could apply just about anything to this glue, glitter, flock, sand, mica powder. I decided to use a coral color, colored glitter there to give me that look. Just tap it off. Now it would probably be wise to let this dry before you do other tasks, but I was trying to do all of this in less than 15 minutes. So I went ahead and used the wide tip and added some glue to the bottom. Of course these products are all non-toxic. It's great to use these with kids. So I felt perfectly fine just using my fingers to smear that around a little bit. Give me some nice um, broad area and then add sand. And just tap that off. And now we have a sandy bottom, some glittery coral, some drawn coral, and it's starting to come together pretty well. I'm going to use the same blue pen that I used to do the wash on the back and write the word party. And the acrylic paint just looks great. You can go ahead and touch up that font, make it fun, and to help it stand out a little bit, add a little white to really make that pop. Of 
course, doing all that, I touched the sand on the bottom. It was still wet, so I had to touch that up a little bit. Ideally, you'd let this dry, but again, I was trying to do the whole tag in 15 minutes. So I have this wonderful yarn that's real f tentacly, and I decided to cut a few pieces of that, use the glue pen, just put a little dot, and get the base of that fiber in that dot. I ended up using a toothpick to help um, position it. And again, it's hard to rotate anything around and keep everything on camera. But this adds a really wonderful fiber and texture to the tag. Um, and it looks like that other seaweed is right behind this fiber seaweed, so it worked out just great. Great use for scraps of fabric, yarn, um, anything really that you want to attach to your tag to give it a little dimension. I put a dot of glue both at the start and the end of each piece of fiber. And I had a little 3D seahorse embellishment, and I used the foam tape to raise that up and pop that up on the tag, again, to give it just a little bit more dimension. But I think the front's looking pretty good. We'll add just a couple stickers that I have of glitter fish. So they're swimming around that coral and seaweed, and the front of the tag is pretty well done. touch up that sand because I kept putting my finger in it while it was wet and then go ahead and let that dry and then we'll go ahead and attach the back. Now that this is dry we're ready to attach the invitation part to the back of the tag. Now admittedly I should have done this right after we finished the water coloring and cut out the tag um, but I didn't plan ahead and sometimes that happens when you do projects. So here I'm using the decorative tape from Elmer's to create a background on this white tag and I like these blue and green circles because they reminded me of bubbles. So I went ahead and covered the whole back of the tag and then used the dot runner to adhere the printed invitation part right on top of that decorative tape. And then you're going to go ahead and just take this and use your scissors to trim it. What's neat is that tape is repositionable so it's easy to move around if you don't get things lined up. So once we've trimmed everything with the scissors, our tag is done. And the finished tag then has that front with fibers and glitter and a three-dimensional seahorse and some sand, all done with that acrylic paint through the painters, and then the back with the decorative tape and the printed invitation. Hope you enjoy it. Visit our website for more ideas and like us on Facebook. Happy crafting!